Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AI Tay for purposely making my partners drinking water warmer than they like. I, 35M like to drink cold or chilled water, and my partner 33F prefers room temperature pre-boiled water. To accommodate both our needs, we have a kettle for boiling water, which is then transferred to two water jugs. These jugs are either left at room temperature or used to refill the dispenser in the fridge. Three months ago, I emptied both room temperature jugs into the fridge and boiled more water at night before bed. My partner came down, furious that she had no room temperature water to drink. We came to an agreement, don't fill up both jugs into the dispenser and leave her one. Fast forward to today, there was going to be some burst water main repairs outside by the utility company. So in the morning before my partner woke up, I decided to make sure we had enough water to drink. I filled the dispenser with one jug, then have the room temperature water in the other jug into both. We had previously shattered a jug on a cold day when we poured boiling water in, so I thought I'd temper this by making sure the boiling water would enter lukewarm water, reducing the chances of shattering the jugs. I went back to work and thought nothing of it. My partner wakes up, goes downstairs, and she is furious. She doesn't have any room temperature water. I try to placate her by mixing the lukewarm water with water from the dispenser to make room temperature water, but it's futile. She won't relent. She tips the entire bottle of water I mixed out into the sink, tries herself, and still can't get the temperature right. She's absolutely raging at me at this point for not listening to her or caring about her needs. She storms out of the house in a huff, and I'm left there wondering how something as simple as water could have escalated so quickly. So, AI TAF, or is perhaps this being blown out of proportion, and mixing water to a specific temperature is not as big of a deal as it seems? Who boiled the kettle and filled the jugs the previous night? I did. Why did you touch all the water? Firstly, we don't have one jug for her and one for me, we have two jugs for the household me and her. I forgot about the water mains being repaired until early this morning when the truck showed up and started working. I rushed down and made sure there was enough water for both of us, not just me. On top of filling all the juds and the dispenser and boiling another kettle full of water, I also filled a few sinks so we'd have extra water to flush the toilet if need be. I honestly thought the water would cool enough by the time she woke up since it was a cold day, but I guess I was wrong. I didn't expect her to react the way she did. Is she OCD? No, she's just pedantic about certain things and needs them to be a specific way. But I don't think it's any more demanding than any other person who is neat and tidy and has certain idiosyncrasies. Everyone has their quirks, right? It's not like she's asking for anything unreasonable, she just likes things a certain way, especially when it comes to her water. I try to respect that but sometimes I mess up. Why don't you drink from the tap? Slash, are you Asian? Yes, we are an Asian couple. Many of you have guessed that. Drinking boiled water is cultural and a preference. There is nothing particularly wrong with the tap water in our country Australia, but it tastes better to my partner after being boiled. Warm, but not boiling water tastes different than cooled to room temperature boiled water to her. So it's a preference. I prefer chilled water, but I'd happily drink room temperature water or even warm if there wasn't any chilled water. I drink what we have, but prefer to have chilled. It doesn't affect me in any big way. This morning, I just filled everything I could, including the dispenser. Why don't you use ice? I can definitely use ice, but our fridge has a built-in dispenser that we have to manually fill, so I do that from time to time with water from the jugs. Normally, I will only ever use one and leave one for her. This morning in my haste, I used both as I wanted to make sure everything was full, the dispenser, both jugs, and a kettle. Why don't you have more jugs? Trust me, this is definitely our next step. As well as the Brita water filter, but I'm worried she might not like the taste. Plus, she might insist we boil it first before it goes into the Brita. Why did you pour half the water into an empty jug and fill both with boiling? As previously explained, we shattered a glass jug on a cold day, previously pouring boiling water directly into it because a science. I don't know the physics here. 
Anyways, I was trying to avoid that and thought the boiling plus room temperature water would cool sufficiently by the time she woke up. I calculated wrong. Anyway, I hope that clarifies most of the questions. I'll post an update once we've reached an amicable resolution. My guess is that it's not about the water, as some people have already said, but there are other underlying issues and this was a trigger. So, two years on, I thought I'd make an update to the original debacle that confused everyone and polarized the community. There were so many comments, some incredibly empathetic and helpful, some racist and mean, but generally, I don't believe there was ever a consensus reached. Despite all that, I was incredibly grateful for all the comments received from everyone. While I didn't take the time to reply, I actually did read through them all. As some people pointed out, our argument was not really about the water. Generally, in every relationship, every person just wants to feel seen, heard, important, understood, and loved. My actions that day did not make her feel that way, and in and of itself was more indicative of a longer-running issue between us and our relationship. For a bit of background, we both have had childhood trauma, and the beginning of our relationship was quite volatile. Defying the odds, we stayed together and got married, however, marriage doesn't solve those issues. Over the last two years, we've continued to stay together. Yes, we are still married, much to the chagrin of those who were advocating our divorce side eye, and continued to grow together. Believe it or not, the incident involving the water was a bit of a catalyst for us to have better conversations regarding how we are going to resolve our own trauma and improve our communication. It's funny how something as small as a jug of water can bring so much into focus. Long story short, she got therapy, I got therapy, we did some marriage counseling, she got more therapy, I got more therapy, and it's been a journey, but a worthwhile one. When two people really do love each other and want to work it out, they'll find a way to do it. I'm so genuinely grateful for my wife, who she was, who she is now, the strength she has, and the belief she had in us, and more so in me. Our communication is better than it's ever been. Our intimacy is stronger than it's ever been, and we are at such an amazing place. The future looks incredibly bright. It took a lot of work to get here, and there's a lot more work left to be done, but we have each other's backs, and we'll keep going together. Looking back, I realized that this whole water situation was a wake-up call for both of us. It made us confront the real issues that were simmering under the surface. Relationships are complex, and it's not just about one event. It's about how that event reflects deeper dynamics. I'm just glad we faced it head-on instead of letting it tear us apart. So, yeah, water might seem trivial, but in our case, it was the spark that lit the fuse for positive change. We're stronger because of it, and I wouldn't trade that for anything. Thank you for listening to today's story. Have a nice day.